You know, a number of restaurants and small businesses have closed their doors and uh, they were the first that stepped up. Uh, we've asked a number of our, all of our residents to stay home if you can. Restaurants can remain open for carry out, curbside and delivery service only. Gatherings of more than 10 people are banned. These are not easy decisions because they will be painful for many people. We have still have a marathon to run, but knowing the city I know, uh, the city that's resilient, uh, the city that can stand on its two feet when knocked down, I know that we will get through this. 60, 250, 301, 360. These numbers may sound familiar to Richmonders. They are the roads you drive every day to get to your job, your grocery store, and your restaurants. And right now, these roads and others like it are filled with empty parking lots where businesses like restaurants were thriving just over a month ago. Many businesses are affected by the coronavirus pandemic and restaurants are one of the hardest hit. The most difficult decision was two weeks ago where we had to make the, the hard choice to let all the hourly employees go, 460-ish employees without a job. Um, that was tough. We've never had to do anything like that. I mean, 65 people in a blink without jobs. This is uncharted territory for everybody, so I mean, who knows what to do? So I think making the decision to close was the most difficult one that we had to make because that was gonna profoundly affect not just us, but everyone on our payroll, the people who come regularly, who depend on that place for a social outlet. When you close, how are you gonna pay your bills? What's gonna happen with your loan payment if you took a business loan payment out and you owe so much money a month for your rent? I mean, I'm used to making difficult decisions. That's kind of what we do as owner operators. We have a lot of staff, we have a lot of employees, um, and we need to make choices to help them. We need to make choices about the menu, about pricing, about how they're customers. What I'm not used to is making decisions about how do I better public health? Well, furloughs might be just a, a name or a number on a spreadsheet. It's, it's about people and uh, it's tough. We've had uh, people with us for as long as 15 years. And, uh, you know, that's not something you put on a spreadsheet. The biggest thing is just letting this situation, this experience that everyone's having, be uh, a reminder of how important and how fragile small, locally owned family businesses are. Nobody is doing the job that they were interviewed for right now. That's for sure. We're adapting every day with what we can do. Um, you know, we've had to change along with everyone else. We're gonna have to shift the way we do business. Everybody is. Because restaurants have to undergo regular health inspections to stay in business, one would think they have a grasp on these things. But this situation calls for greater health precautions. And while it's not easy, restaurants are finding a way. We are sanitizing our stations and our work surfaces. There is essentially zero contact. We have a mobile app that you can see on the car where you can get free pay and never have to get out of your car. Or they still do it the old way on a station set up where they just come in and get the food so there's no contact. We're doing everything through an app now. I have the table set up in the doorway where people can um, pick up their stuff, walk up and pick up. The last time my wife and I ate at a restaurant was March 11th. That was 40 days ago. For us, going out to a restaurant is something we do every week. Without that experience, a sense of normalcy is lost. But despite this, restaurants are sensing a stronger community than ever before. They're, they're going to eat, and they love the food. 
But a lot of that is the ambiance, the open mic, the karaoke. They're going for the whole experience. That cheers environment of knowing everyone at the bar. You always develop a good relationship with your customers, you know, and you get to know them and they get to know you. Uh, the The community is more than just our staff and the regulars. It's, it's, um, it's this web that goes throughout Richmond um, because we've been around that long. To the Richmond restaurant community, a lot of you guys, generally speaking, it's a really neat community where people actually want to help each other. Who are the ones that are doing the most good in our city, in any community, any given community? It's the small guys, it's the little guys, it's the, it's the small businesses. So I hope, what I hope that comes out of all of this is a reminder and a wake up call to all of us that small businesses are the backbone of any community. There's something really special and maybe maybe even beautiful happening right now is that people are appreciating something that they probably never thought about before, which is community and fellowship. I think people are so eager for that connection. Let's find creative ways to like go out and, you know, be together. And that's what restaurants and bars and gathering places, that can't go away, you know. Society sucks if we can't gather. It is a sense of comfort when someone, someone comes in and, you know, we're greeting by their first name and, okay, I'll just have the usual. And there's just something that's just, it, it feels good about that, that, that someone cares about you. For some, these hardships are just a chance to start fresh, to reevaluate what's really important and come back stronger than ever. I think this forced sabbatical, if you will, um, in many industries has forced us to kind of like reevaluate what's important and how to best spend our time. We've been given a, an opportunity in a way to kind of take some time, get out of the rat race for a little bit. So work on those hard skills um, and be able to come back stronger than ever. You know, perhaps most important of all, there's been a lot of love and pride and gratitude for all the staff and patrons. Let me show you what I mean. Hey, thanks for coming. Thank you guys. Got my sandwich. This is awesome. Thanks guys. All right, All right take care. Stay safe. Uh, the Team Big Cuisine a la carte. Can't wait for our customers to come in uh, just to say hi. Want, you know, want to see the faces and see smiles. We can't wait to see you because we are going to open back up. So your your favorite spot at the bar will still be there. But, you know, I hope that they stay strong and you know, we're all doing the same thing. We're all just trying our best to reopen and get our employees back to work. We hope that this safely ends quickly so we can, you know, we can get you tacos and booze. <laughs> yeah, people reaching out on Facebook uh, saying how much they miss us and hope we're doing well. Um, it means a lot. I, I hope you feel, genuinely feel our love for you. Can't wait to that first day when we reopen and uh, be able to thank people personally. Um, you just have to hang in there and, and get through this. I think it's going to be worth it. We can all stick together and work together and fight for each other through this. I want to fight through this and scrap and fight and innovate and do everything I can to try to stay afloat and we're either going to be successful and make it through this or we're going to go down and swing it. So stay safe, you know, just listen to the experts, be careful, stay safe. We'll get through this and we'll hope to see you soon. So after all is said and done, what can we as a community do to support our local restaurants? Carrytown Cupcakes is still operating um, in unlimited capacity. The thing I recommended was that people follow their favorite businesses on social media. I launched this initiative um, called the Don't Look Back Club to help out our staff. Customers have 
a choice between a $25 package or a $40 package. You're going to get a membership card uh, that will be get you 10% off at Don't Look Back for an entire year from when we reopen. The class of 89 from JMU called in with $1,000. They're just use, using us as a conduit to provide for their donations. So we're using our expertise to spread out the food to those the hospitals that are working to care for our loved ones in this trying time. Uh, we're doing the, the daily deliveries of the, the cold brew growlers up to the VCU Health to the emergency department, the doctors and nurses in the emergency department, and um, the medical respiratory ICU. So every every day, or just about every day, we take um, the cold brew growlers up to them. They want to try to support their uh, servers or staff members uh, directly. Um, there are GoFundMe pages out there for people. Created the EAT Associate Relief Fund on GoFundMe and 100% of those proceeds went straight to the associates that were temporarily displaced. When we open back up, please come, you know, hang out, eat, drink, have fun. That's the best way to support us. Thank you to all the restaurants who are a part of this project. We wish we could include more of you. And if you're a patron and have been inspired to support your favorite local restaurants, go pay them a visit or find out how you can personally support them. Most are still answering calls, emails, and social media messages. We've included some links in the comments below for you to check out. Remember, we're all in this together. Grace and peace. Thank you for watching.